In the last video, I introduced you to a 1974 Marina Coupe that is white. It was an 1800 SDL Coupe that was a little worse for wear. I've been sat in a garden for about 10 years. Um, but I thought it was about time to pull it out and do something really cool with it. So in this video, we are gonna be starting work on the Long Door Coupe project. We're gonna get it acid dipped. We're gonna see how it comes back. And we're gonna try and fit some TR7 front suspension pieces to the front of the Marina Coupe and uh, hope that it all stays level and stays true. We have got a bare metal Marina Coupe just ripe for modification, repair, and absolutely making it the best restoration job, but also making it and building it into something that nobody has done, but thousands of people have talked about. Welcome to phase one of the Long Door Coupe. So I'm just going to go through the process of this bare metalin. When it went to Enviro Strip, which is in Tamworth, basically the process is it goes into an oven and it gets baked to around about 400 degrees or so. So not enough to distort any panels, but basically it loosens all that paint, all the bitumen, and obviously the lead. Areas like here, you can see where that would have been. In fact, it's made my life easier because up here on that seam, it's exposed all those spot welds which are on the roof, which means they can be drilled out. That means that whole quarter panel will come off quite nicely. So yeah, it goes into that oven, it gets baked. And then after that, it goes into uh, an acid tank for 24 hours. That is sulfuric acid and possibly some other bits and pieces within that as well. It comes out of that acid tank after 24 hours. It gets rinsed down. Once it's pressure washed, it goes back in the acid briefly, comes out of that goes into a neutralizing tank. Once it's in the neutralizing tank, it stays in there, I think for about 10 minutes. Once it's out of that, then it gets, what happens then? It comes out of the neutralizing tank into a pacifier, which is another tank. It goes in there for a little while, it comes out of there, then it gets steam cleaned, then it goes back in the oven, gets baked, so everything is completely dried out, and then you effectively, you're left with this. It is literally bare metal, so you will start to get flash rusted. What we've got on it is actually a rust blocker, which is over the bare metal, so where you might see it looks rusty, but it's actually got a rust blocker on it, so it actually is a clear coat effectively, which is wiped on the panels, um, which I've also then gone ahead and done it on these as well. It's better than WD-40. It is something that will easily wash off because one thing obviously for body prep and for paint, you don't want any sort of waxy or silicon or anything like that on there before you start doing paintwork. Now that to be completely metal worked, the whole car front to back, modified, repaired, built into the long door coupe, which obviously I've talked about before, as well as doing the long door part of it, we're also gonna fit McPherson suspension, subframe assembly, and because of the proportionalness of the car, of the project, moving those B pillars back, we're gonna lengthen the wheelbase by four inches. And all the metal work is done, it'll then go back to Envirostrip. It's then gonna be dipped again to get any of the surface rust and get that clear coat off of it. It's then gonna go and be e-coated. All of this means one thing we're building this car for, and that's an IVA, an individual vehicle approval test, which is basically my rule book for this vehicle. It has to be approved on an IVA, it'll get a Q plate more than likely, but it'll be done properly, it'll be done safely, and it'll be done built to last. But now I'm gonna get on, and the first job, apart from clear all this mess and get these panels out of the way, is to get this whole front end off the car. Right, we're getting a bit technical now, because I wanna sort of see, before I start cutting this off, I wanna give myself a couple of datum points so that I know the wheelbase, because we're basically extending the wheelbase on this with the TR7 chassis rails, which is down here. So I've measured from the cross member there along, so the shell is straight, it is straight, I've put a level on it, it is straight and level. Yeah, so we've measured from the cross member to the center line of where the marina um, lower arm is. So this is here, this is 990 millimeters or 39 inches. That is the centre line, as you can see the centre line comes up and would actually skew through where the lever arm damper is here and the arm up to the top, that is all nicely level. And then what I've done is measured 
from the back of the TR7 rail, measured that out to where the marina is, and then measured off the centre line here, which is the first hole where the subframe goes for the TR7, which is where the McPherson lower arm comes out. And I measured the distance between the two, and that is basically um, 1,110 millimetres from the cross member, or 43 and three quarter inches. So roughly 100 mil, 120 mil extension, or just over four inches, four and a half inches, wheelbase extension for using the TR7 setup. This way, we get a much better distance from the bulkhead. We have much more room in the engine bay, and hopefully it'll look a damn sight better. So there you go. That was what was a headlamp panel, which actually probably was a genuine piece, or certainly a pattern piece. Um, and they basically stuck it over the old one. So you can see this is the original panel, which has basically rotted out the back of the valance. So yeah, that is repairable if we were gonna reuse it. It'd be a bit of a mess and a bit of a shame to spend the time doing that when we've got a new valance that can go on and headlamp panel but that's what happens unfortunately common practice I suppose where somebody's asked a garage to do a job uh, that probably should have been undertaken by a body shop see what I've done here is basically drilled out the spot welds of the original panel where it was welded to this slam panel now if this slam panel and again it could be repaired it's just a bit of a slice that's been taken out I had to use the cutter because it had these gas welds um, that obviously I can't drill out, I've got a uh, cut out. So these are the drill holes for taking the spot welds out. There's a couple more to do on there. It means if I was then to reuse this panel on another car, I could basically plug it back uh, using this side. Same with up here, I did those three, which are actually the bulkhead to the inner flitch which I don't actually think I needed to do, but it doesn't matter because whatever in a flit structure, which obviously is gonna be the Triumph unit, we can utilize those holes to plug it back together again. I could just cut it off with a angle grinder, which is I'm sure people are screaming at me, why don't you just do that? Well, I could, but it's about preservation and with old cars, having something to work from as a pattern pays dividends in the long run for other people to keep their cars on the road. So hence the reason for not using an angle grinder. Plus this has all been acid dipped, it's clean. We can see where things are good and maybe things are a bit not good. Like pinholes on the radio cross member panel. But that's fine, they can be repaired and put onto another car. So it's not, all is not lost. This will be reused some way or another. But let's try getting the rest of it off. Okay, so I've got a lot of this front near side all drilled out. I've basically used an eight mil drill bit because I'm not interested in putting this back on. If I was, um, I'd have probably used a, a spot weld drill on these um, rather than drilling all the way back through again. But I've done the same on the bulkhead and the floor because the chassis rail that's here is all coming off um, and anywhere that's left with a hole in the floor is basically going to be a new floor or if it's on the bulkhead we can always back these and fill them back in again with some weld 
so I'm not too worried about that. But this side is pretty much done. I'm just going through with the spot weld chisel just to try and ease them off, as you can see. It's lived there for 50 years. It, it, it wants to stay there. So we're going to try and get all them off. I've got a brace, well, jack sands, block of wood on both sides with a bit of box tubing just to support the weight of it when it drops. Because it's disconnected from the front here. That's not on anymore, believe it or not. So hopefully it should slide this way. And then we've got one side done. And then it's the other side. Use the spot weld chisel. I'm joking, I mean, you know, slightly gouged a few little bits. But it's fine. We wasn't really going to use that cross member panel. Or maybe, you know, it can be repaired. It's not a problem. It can be repaired. It's pretty much loose now. So we just need to get one last bit of metal that's attached itself down here. And that's the passenger side done. So I've got the car now front end off. And before I show you that, what I've built is a jig custom made from my own thoughts, my own head, uh, a jig to basically sit the whole shell on, which means it's gonna be nice and square. Now this is just made of 50 mil box tubing, uh, four meter lengths for the sides, and then 150 mil boxes between them spaced evenly to support, the, basically make a ladder. Uh, brace at the back and the front. The central braces where the body locks in, which is utilizing the holes that are in the chassis rails, which were used when the car was on the production line. There are 16 mil holes spaced on the shell. There are some at the back behind the wheel. And then again on the uh, front rails where the suspension is. Right, so now the shell is absolutely square. It is straight, it is level. Uh, what I've now done is fitted up the TR7 rails and their associated panels. So this side is all done, this is all level and true. Uh, we've set a level on the scuttle, that is all true and level. We've set a level on the back, sorry, the front of the rails. That is square and level to the shell. Everything is as it should be, this is all tightened up um, on the subframe though i need to get new fixing rubbers and things like that because obviously they're quite worn but it doesn't matter because this is hanging all i need this to do is to give me the width of the rails so with that in mind we went ahead and ordered tr7 inner structure front wheel arches from rob sport international the tr7 inner structure onto the marina body shell fits really nicely at the moment i've just clear code them in so it's just to give an idea basing it on these datums of where uh, the inner structure meets the existing chassis rail and it's not bad it's pretty good um, the only thing i'm finding at the moment is that this tower structure is a little bit off i think because you've got a bit of a rounded rail there i don't know if you can see so we're going to have to pull that in at some stage, but the back meets up really nicely, so that's good. Jig around this, this turret, which is a bit of a pain, but the main thing I look at is the back piece is in square to the shell, and it should fit okay after that. So in the next video, we'll be working on the chassis rails that are underneath the floor. These are going to be made out of 1.2 mil box section. No, they're not. These are going to be made out of 1.2 mil steel. They're either going to be bent, laser cut and bent, or they're going to be um, laser cut and then TIG welded together. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Depends what will fit in the brake for bending them and all the rest of it. It's in my head, it's, it's, I've got a few ideas. I've got a few templates I've made already, which I'll show in the next video. And yeah, 
we're going from there. But at the moment, I'm pretty happy with where we're up to. Um, this looks like it'll work. Um, it's never been done before. But whoever designed the TR7 clearly was thinking of marinas. No, they weren't. They weren't really. They were just, I think it's fluke. More fluke. There's, there's no evidence anywhere to suggest that the TR7 front end was destined for the marina. Um, it is very close. There's still a lot to do. But yeah, we're getting there. So stick around in the next video. Hopefully it'll look more like a front end of a car again. Um, and then we'll have new rails underneath and we'll start working on the rest of the car.